Jesus. Go ahead and keep on praising Jesus this morning. He's worthy this morning. As Pastor Tyler was saying, faith without works is dead. We can always say, God, can, we're going, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But until you mix your faith with your works and get up and do it, and you're never going to see it come to pass. Don't you know that this morning? Go ahead and thank you, Jesus. You can go ahead and start it. Worship with me.
until I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Feel me. Provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. Before the opening up and the fill up came, there was first the sacrifice. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. Holy Ghost, that is my prayer this morning, God that we'll have ears to hear, God, your word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, verses 17. Holy Ghost, obedience is better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, verses 22. God, you want more. You want more than just a service, God. You want our lives, God. Just like Abraham put Isaac, God. His only son on the altar, God. His obedience towards you, his only son. That's what some of us need to do this morning, God. We need to lay our Isaac down, God. Because, God, we put it before your house. We put it before our prayer time. God, we put everything first but you. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, verses 33. Holy Ghost, I pray we put us on the altar again, God. I pray we come out of the cave, God, and we be warriors of you, Jesus. But the only way we can do it, God, we got to get up and do what you've called us to do, God. It says, many are called, but few were ever chosen. Matthew 22, verses 14. God can call you to do something, but if you don't ever get up and do it. And you know what getting up means? A sacrifice. God, I'm putting me on the altar. That's what it said in Genesis 22. The Lord told Abraham, take Isaac and put him on the altar. And just as he was about to kill his only son, the Lord stopped him. And he called that place Jehovah Jireh. It says the Lord will provide because a ram got stuck in the fence. And he used that as a sacrifice. But God requires more of us today. He requires our obedience. What good is a man or a woman of God if they don't obey the voice of God? My Lord Jesus, it says in 1 Kings 19, if you'll turn there with me. Yeah, I'm going to do something a little different. Sometimes it's good to do something different. Gets us out of our routine. Say amen when you get there. verse 13 of 1 Kings 19 and it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in a mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave and behold there came a voice unto him and said what doest thou here Elijah and he said I have been a very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because of thy children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword and I even I am only left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be the king of Syria. Verses 16, And Jehu, the son of Nishni, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of... I can't say that word. Shalt... 
thou anoint to be prophet in the room. And 17, it shall come to pass that him shall they escape the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. 18, yet I have me with me 7,000 in Israel, and all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. My Lord, it says he went back into the wilderness. He told him, go and depart. He told him, he told, the Lord told Elijah, what are you doing here? And that's the question I've called each and every one of us. God, what, what am I doing here, God? What is my purpose at Acts 29, Church Under God? What am I supposed to be doing? Just like Elijah was, he was anointed of God, but he was sitting in a cave. He was sitting in the cave saying, God, I'm the only one, God, going through something. But when he heard the still, small voice of God, it says he got up and he stood up. And my God, he obeyed the voice of God. And he went and he anointed the next generation. What if our obedience to God is dependent on the next generation? What about your family getting saved? Your obedience towards God, just like Elijah, he could have chose to stay down. He could have chose to listen to the voice of the enemy. He's like, I've listened to the voice of the enemy too long. It's time for me to arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Isaiah 60 verses 1. Church, it's time for us to get up and do what God's called us to do. It says it's high time to wake out of sleep because your redemption is drawing nigher than when you first believed. Romans 13 verses 11. It's time to get up. It's time for you to get back up again. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he arises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Proverbs 24, verses 16. It ain't the fall that counts. It's the getting back up and obeying God's voice. When, when, when his Elijah stood up and he came at the entering, the Lord told him, go anoint Elijah. Go anoint Jehu. Who's Jehu? He's the one that slew Jezebel. One man's obedience saved a whole next generation. That's what God requires of us. Obedience is better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15 verses 22. Our sacrifice is God. God, I'm going to put me on the altar. It says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, it says, I put you therefore in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. God put it there, but it's up to you to stir it up. God may have called you to do something but if you don't ever get up and do it just think of it if Elijah would have never came out of the cave if he never would have got up and do, did what God called him to where would the next generation be same for you God's calling us to get up and do what he's called us to do what if your obedience to God is dependent on whether or not your family gets saved? What if your obedience to God is determined for the next generation to come? Just like with Abraham. I mean with Moses. He talked with him as a man with his best friend. And somebody behind him, old little Joshua, was following Moses, my Lord, can the same be said about us? My Lord, the next generation is dependent on our prayer life. The next generation is dependent on how much you give God. If your children see that you only give God 89%, they're going to give God 89%. If they see you missing church, guess what they're going to do? They're going to start missing church too. 
my Lord Jesus it says in Ephesians 6 verses 11 it says put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil my God it's time not to put off God it's time to put on God my Lord we got so many people saying I love you Jesus but do you follow him he said my sheep hear my voice I know them and they follow me John 10 verses 27 I come to ask you who are you following because the God that Elijah heard made him get up the God that Elijah heard made him do what God told him to do because his obedience God said I'll bless you our obedience who'd you put on this morning did you put on Jesus or did you put something else first before him the next generation is dependent on our prayer life they're depending on whether or not you get up and pray in the morning just as Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26 it said he went a little further and he said he looked at the disciples and he said will you watch for me but now, but an hour my Lord and when he came back to him again he found them sleeping for sorrow my God I would hate to know that God called me to do something but I was too slothful of a servant towards him that I could even watch with him anymore I couldn't even spend time with him anymore I can spend time with a ball game many last night were looking at a ball game seeing who's gonna win but my God who was saying I'm ready to be in the house of the Lord like David was David said I was glad when they said unto me let us go ye into the house of the Lord he said where your treasure is there your heart will be also this is a heart gospel when it gets here, it'll flow out everywhere else. This is how you know somebody's right with God. You don't have to call them and ask them when are they coming to church. You ain't got to call them and say, hey, have you got up to pray? You ain't got to call them and say, oh, I know you've been doing this and that. Oh, no, you ain't got to call and check on them. Because, no, I put my body unto subjection just like Paul did. He said, I will most gladly rejoice in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. My Lord Jesus, he said, I put my body in subjection. In other words, when I feel like doing something, I don't do it. When I don't feel like going, I go. When I don't feel like praying, I pray. When I don't feel like praising him, I, pray, I praise his name. My God. It says the flesh is weak. The spirit indeed is willing. That's what Jesus told him in Matthew 26. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It says in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 12, but when I am weak, then am I strong. My God, when you feel like you're the weakest, you say, Brianna, you look like you're coming out fast or slow this morning. I didn't, I may, I didn't feel like doing this, Sister Melissa, but I put my body under subjection because I knew the call that God put on my life I may not feel like doing it but by the grace of God I've learned that when I am weak oh God I, I can't do it but when I am weak I learn to lean on him that's what some of us need to do you need to take a leap of faith that says God I'm going to obey your voice this time I'm going to get up because we walk by faith and not by sight 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 God I'm going to get up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow after you I'm going to walk by faith God I'm going to go into the thick darkness it says in Exodus 20 verses 19 it says Moses drew near unto God where the thick darkness was while the children of Israel sit back and watched we got too many watching saints 
We need some more that says, God, if that's you in the darkness, I'm going to where you're at. God, he said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. John 10 verses 27. God is looking for some people that says, I'll follow you even into the dark. God, even if it hurts, even if I have to do like Genesis 22, I got to lay my own son on the altar, God. I want to be known for following after you because if we're not following him who are we following when's the last time we've heard his voice 1 Samuel 3 it talks about when Samuel was being called of God it says the Lord called Samuel one time and he went unto Eli because he was afraid. And he told him to go back to his room. The Lord called Samuel the second time. And Eli told him, no, just go back to your room. This is Brianna's translation. And the Lord called Samuel the third time. And he said, so, and then it said Eli perceived that it was the Lord that was talking to Eli. And he said, next time, Samuel, when you hear the voice of the Lord, say, hear him, my Lord. My Lord Jesus, what you want me to do? My Lord. And it said, the Lord called Samuel the fourth time. This is somebody's fourth call. My Lord, if you didn't get it the first time, the second time, the third time, here's your fourth time. My Lord Jesus. And he said, Lord, hear him, my Lord. In me, my Lord Jesus. That's what we need to say to God this morning, God. Here am I, just like it said in Isaiah 6, verses 8. Here am I, Lord. Send me. And he said, my Lord, Isaiah, the Lord told Isaiah, he said, I'm going to sing you to people that have ears but can't hear. Eyes but can't see. My Lord. Bless his heart. It's just like when Elijah asked Elisha for a double portion. He said, boy, you asked for a hard thing. See, many want the anointing if it comes easy. Many think they could just start off ministry and have a mega church. That's where it happens. It's just like David said in Psalms 26. Examine me, O Lord. Prove me, try my reins in my heart. My Lord, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror. Lord, examine me. Try me, Lord. Because God, if you didn't ever try me, I wouldn't know I needed a Savior. God, if you didn't try me, you, I would have never known I wasn't supposed to be around them people. God, if you never would have tried me, God, I wouldn't have never, I wouldn't have never loved your presence as much as I do now. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me my God yea do I walk through I got a faith that'll walk many's got a faith that'll sit down they think this is all God's called them to do no we walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians 5 verses 7. If your faith only tells you you only need to do this, it's time for you to get back up again. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he arises up again. And until you rise up again, you can't walk before you stand. So I'm asking you a question. Will you get up or will you lay back down? 
Get up requires, it requires of you a sacrifice. Just like in John 6, verse 67, when Jesus asked the disciples a question, will you also go away? He asked them in reference. He said, this is a hard saying, God. Who can hear it? I'm talking to somebody who says, God, I want to be a disciple of yours, not just a casual follower. Because Jesus had a lot of casual followers, but he only ever ever had one to press in. I'm talking about a pressing in disciple. This is God, I know you've called me more than just to sit in the pew. You've called me more just to come in and hear another church service. No, you called me to go do what the word says. Huh? He said, I wish you not be hearers only, but be ye doers of the word. Just like it says, Mark 16, 15, go ye into all the world and preach ye the gospel. He didn't ever mean for the, all the preachers to go and tell the whole world. He meant for his own. That means me, you. God's called us to go preach to a world that don't know him. But we have shut up for so long. We're like Elijah. He's anointed of God, but here he is. He's found in a cave feeling sorry for himself. Verses 18, he said, I have me 7,000 Elijah that have not bowed, that have not bend. My God, Lord, to bow. And that's what I've come to tell you this morning. My God, God's got other people that has not bowed and bend. You're not the only one. My God, it's time to get up out of your slumber. It's time to rise and shine for Jesus again. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Isaiah 60 verses 1. Because God's got a call on each and every one of us. But we got to get up and do it again. Amen. Just like Pastor Tyler said this morning. The dead don't praise God. Neither they that go down into silence. God didn't anoint me to shut up. God didn't anoint me to stay in a corner. And God sure enough didn't anoint me to stay in a cave. God never anointed me for that. He anointed me. God, I'm weak. This is what you anointed me for. My prayer. Oh God, I don't know if I can go on anymore. But if I learn to lean on him, I can be just as David did. Yea, though I walk through the shadow. There first has to be a light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. My Lord Jesus, yea, though I walk through. Somebody needs to get up and go through some mess again. But the Lord told Elijah, he says, go back to the way of the wilderness. In other words, Elijah was way over here out of God's will. So God had to tell him to get back up and go all the way back to where he took himself to the wilderness. He had to turn him around. It says, it's better for you not to even make a vow unto God if you don't intend to pay for it. Many of us has made vows to God, say, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He said, Jesus said, it's better for you not to even vow the vow if you don't intend to pay it. What have you promised God you was going to do? It's easy to hear something. Oh, I, God's called me here to do this and that. But if you don't ever get up and do it, it'll come to naught. Neglect not the gift in, that's within you. God put a gift in us. But it's up to us not to neglect it. Some of us has put the gift... Like it says in Second, First uh, Samuel ten verses twenty two, it says they found the Lord hidden among the things. Some of us has hid God. 
up under our job. Some of us has hidden him among a football game. Some of us has hidden him among anything that we put other first other than him. He was hidden among the things. There's only there's many things, but there's only one Jesus. What you do on this earth, you have to answer for yourself. Just like as Isaiah said in Isaiah 6 verses 8. He said, the Lord asked him, Isaiah, a question. Whom shall I send? Here am I. That's all God wants. Here am I, Lord. Send me. He not only wants to save you, sanctify you, and fill you with the Holy Ghost, He wants to anoint you to go. He may want you to come up here and sing. But you got to be like Peter did. He stepped out of the boat. Many get on to Peter. The boy messed up so many times, but he got back up. My Lord, he said, God, if that's really you out on the water, bid me to come. And he stepped out of the boat. You will never experience the level of God you've never seen until you learn to get out of the boat. How will you know if you can do it? If you never even try. It takes obedience. Obedience that says, God, if you're out there on the water, that's where I want to be. It's obedience that says, God, even if you're in the thick darkness, God, I'm going to draw nigh unto you, God. God, the sideline saints, the children of Israel said, Moses, you go talk to God because if we get any closer, something in us is going to have to die. If we talk to him, he says, uh, we're going to die. My Lord Jesus, uh, my Lord, we got many people that can tell Jesus, I love you for a far off. Just like the children, call them the sideline saints. They never get put in the game because they're too busy watching all the time. Watching somebody else being used by God. Do you want to be known as somebody who went through their whole life just being a sideline saint? While the man of God is doing what God's called him to do, they're found over here just watching. For long, you watch too much, you'll go to sleep. Because I, I, I ain't really known too many people after they watch, especially Daddy, bless his heart. He'd be in there watching the TV. For long, he'd be asleep. 99% of the time, he always falls, on, falls asleep watching TV. But that's what some of us have done. Some of the saints. We've watched for so long that we fell asleep. We can't even hear God's voice, just like Elijah did. Anointed of God. Yes, God called him, but he ran away. Some of us has ran from the calling. You'll be like Jonah in the belly of the well. That's where he found the Lord. He could have had it easy. But he chose the hard way. But that's some of us. We've watched for so long. We have fell asleep. Are you going to get up and just stop coming to church just to come to church? Just to occupy space? 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, he says, I put you therefore in remembrance that you stir up. 
the gift that is in you by the putting on of my hands. It's up to you to stir it. It's up to you to get up. But are you going to hear what the word says? It says, after the earthquake shook, it said the Lord was not in the earthquake. It said then there was a fire, it says, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a still small voice. That still small voice that says, yes, I want to spend time with you again. That voice that says, will you just supplicate for me with me an hour just like he did in the Garden of Gethsemane? Can you watch but an hour? What have you hidden him up under? God don't, he wants more than just a sacrifice. He wants your obedience. Whatever it is, I invite you to come lay it at the altar and ask God what you want me to do. Why am I even at Acts 29 Church unto God? Is there something I'm supposed to be doing? If it's nothing but sweeping the floors, David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in tents of wickedness. My Lord, my Lord, people say, God didn't anoint. If you can do your house, why can't you do God's house? No servant is greater than his master. If it's up here singing, take a leap of faith, just like Peter did. But do something. Because you know why? We walk by faith. In Him, we live and move. And we have our being. Acts 17, verses 28. It's only in Him that we move. That we live and have our being. When's the last time you got up and said, God... What is it you want me to do? Who you want me to witness to? God, I don't want to be known as a sideline saint. I don't want to be known for just going through the motions, God. Just like Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 20 verses 9, Thy word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I became weary with forbearing and I could not stay. He got tired of fighting God. He got tired of wrestling against God. Ain't you tired of wrestling against the will of God? It says when Jesus, when he went a little further in Matthew 26, it said as his tears became great, Great drops of blood falling to the ground. He said, God, he said, he says, not my will be done, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My God, Jesus did not want to endure the cross, but he had each and every one of us on his mind. That's why he said when he got down on his knees, nevertheless, God, not my will be done. I'm tired of doing it on my own. I'm tired of doing in my, my own ways he said show me your ways that I might know you my God he said that to Moses show me your ways Lord that I might know you God ain't you tired of going your own route because we know where your route leads to a cave of depression to a cave of slumber and sleep Are you going to hear the call? Are you going to get up? Or are you going to lay back down? It says the wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Proverbs 28 verses 1. 
God didn't anoint Elijah to run away from the enemy. It says the wicked do that. Do you know who lives on the inside of you? Hosea 2 verses 8. Is there not a king in thee? My Lord Jesus, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8 verses 37. My God, if we really knew who it is that is in us. When the enemy comes in like a flood. Says the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. He said, My enemy shall fall back and perish at thy presence. Psalms 9, verses 3. When we learn to get in his presence again, that's when the enemy will flee. Tyler, if you'll play that song I sung earlier. What are you going to be known for? Getting up or laying down. Ask God in these altars, God, what you want me to do? Why'd you even call me to here to Acts 29, God? Is there something I need to be doing, God? What you want me to do, God? Here am I, Lord. We need to say that to the Lord. Here am I, Lord. Send me, God. I want you to use me. Not just somebody else.
Every morning, she's predictable. Sometimes she beats me and Daddy here. She's in there cleaning the toilets. She's in there cleaning and vacuuming. Until I overflow You provide the spirit And I will open up inside Fill me up, God Fill me up, God Fill me up, God Fill me up Fill me up, and every tormenting spirit that says otherwise, I bind and curse in the name of Jesus. Harabasha, you are worthy, Ashley. Harabasha, you are more than my conqueror. You are mine, says the Lord, and I have anointed thee to do this. You shall be tormented no more. For I delight in thee, my child. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sing it again. You provide the fire. You provide the spirit And I will open up inside Fill me up God Fill me up God Fill me up God Fill me up Fill me up God Fill me up, God. Lamont, will you come help me? Get behind Tyler. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. I thank you right now, Holy Ghost, for this anointed vessel, oh God. God, by his stripes you were healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. God, you took it in your own body, God, that we didn't have to keep it. God, I pray right now, God, healing from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God. Anoint him afresh, God. Touch his body because we were healed at the heel. I thank your Holy Ghost right now, God. Strength from another world. I thank you right now, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can get behind Lamont. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, use Lamont. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. God, all you want from us is willing and obedience. Thank you, Lord. Touch him, Lord Jesus. Thank you. God, you be the glory.